With the release of Top Gun Maverick, Microsoft's released a whole bunch of new planes, including this SR-72 Darkstar. It took me a few flights to get this thing flying correctly, so follow along and I'm going to show you how to get this thing to Mach 10. Alright, the first thing you'd want to do when you get in this plane is turn on the battery to give yourself power. Check our fuel status over here. We don't have anywhere near enough fuel. These two center tanks are your scramjet tanks for your high speed, whereas the outer tanks, the ones on the wings and the tail and the nose, those are for low altitude maneuvering. So we're going to need to add ourselves some gas. That's a little better. Next thing you want to do is turn on your APU generator. It only takes a few seconds to go from standby to ready. There we go. Good to go. All right, let's start our left engine. Fuel pressure coming up. RPM's coming up. Fully automatic start. Don't have to worry about it beyond that. While we're here, we can turn on some nav lights and some beacon lights. Sixty percent, sixty-four should stabilize around there. Perfect. And turn on the other engine. We can also check our fuel pumps and fuel transfers up here. This is all automatic for you, so you don't really have to worry about it. The last page here, this is super useful. This is your ascent profile. So if you follow this ascent profile, you should be able to get up to your max Mach numbers. And we got two engines fully started. Once they're started, you'll notice the generators are off. We don't want that. We want our generators on. Generators on. All right, and with that, we are ready to start flying. All right, there's no flaps in this plane, so you pretty much just floor it. Got to make sure your afterburners are on, otherwise you will have troubles uh, getting up to your appropriate speeds. Pull afterburners on. Away we go. Hit about 150 knots, start pulling back. Should be off the ground about 200. And pitch up for about 20 degrees. Gear coming up. And we're only 1,500 feet above the ground, and we're already doing 400 knots. Now keep an eye on your Mach meter up top. That's one of your most important gauges during this entire flight, especially during your ascent profile. You're gonna wanna turn towards our destination. Turning at high speeds at high Mach numbers is gonna be really, really difficult. So you're gonna wanna dial this in sooner than later. All right. You can see we're already at 12,000 feet, 13,000 feet coming through. Buy all the little airplanes down there. This simulator is just absolutely gorgeous. You can see the main engines running there. In a few minutes, you'll see what it's like when we're actually in full scramjet mode. All right, now as we pass about 30,000 feet, I tend to go for about 35,000 feet. We're gonna to wanna to roll it on its back and then perform a 1G uh, pushover. When we perform that 1G pushover, that'll start pointing the nose at the ground and allow us to pick up a lot more speed. So let's do that right about now. Unloaded wings, roll inverted, and just kind of let the nose fall over initially. It's going to want to kind of stay up, but you're going to want to set it for about zero Gs. So effectively, you're going to be a little bit weightless. Slow pushover. Until we're about 20 degrees down. And then you can roll, unload the wings and roll out. We'll start pulling back ever so slightly, only about 1.2 to 1.4 Gs, while the plane keeps picking up speed. So it's losing altitude, you're trading that altitude for speed. By the time we're level, we should be at about Mach 1.5. There we are. Alright, keep 
pull it up. You might want to pull it a little bit tighter once we're at this point. We don't need to lose any more altitude. We've got enough speed now that the the ramjet engines are going to work. That the main engines are going to start working with ram air pressure. Start pulling up. We don't really want to get much above about 10 degrees up. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to pick up the speed we need. To, you can see we're just increasing our airspeed right now. Mach 1.88. Right about there is fine. 1.9. Mach 2. Now our next transition here is going to be once we reach Mach 3. Then we're going to want to enable our scramjet engines. So let's start get ready start getting ready for that doing our pre-flight checks turn on our fuel cell open our scramjet cover fuel cell looks like a windows key icon down there and we're increasing our airspeed increasing our airspeed it's getting faster and faster and faster get rid of the scramjets and once we hit three turn that on and we can close the cover now you can see over here on the left hand side these bay doors are opening you see the bay door number increasing there 59 so what that's doing is it's shutting off the airflow to the main jet engines to protect them and forcing air into the scramjet and now the scramjet is dramatically increasing its pressure and our Mach number is now massively increasing speed and from here we can start pulling up even harder so we're doing about 60,000 uh, so we're at about 60,000 feet and increasing. And we're going to want to push over here starting soon uh, so that we level off about 120,000 feet. We're going to want to tighten up our, our uh, heading over here as well before we get too far off course. It's about 100,000 feet. Let's start pushing over. We're going to probably blow a little past this, but that's all right. I like to cruise at somewhere around 120 to 130,000 feet. Some people like rolling it on its back to do this last part of the maneuver to keep it in positive G's, but it's just a simulator, so it's probably okay. And there we go, somewhere around 130,000 feet. Doing Mach 9.15. It's an 1800 nautical miles to go. And if you look at the back of the engines, you can see the top part of the engine there has been closed off where the main part, uh, where the low altitude jet was. There's only a sliver open where that scramjet is. Now is as good a time as any to actually figure out where we're going to be landing. So there's not a whole lot of ILSs here at um, Honolulu's airport. So we're just going to land on 08, localizer 111.7, 111.7. Turn on our navs, swap that over, and the VOR is 114.8. And flop that over. So let's do some back of the envelope calculations on our fuel burns here. So we're doing about 40,000, 43,000 pounds per hour. And this plane only has, got, only has about 20,000 pounds of uh, actual scramjet fuel. So that means we've only got about a half hour worth of fuel, but we're doing 57,000 knots, which means we can do somewhere around 25 to 3,000 nautical miles on that half hour worth of fuel. So that means we should be able to fairly easily get to Honolulu and a little bit more. We won't really want to push that because, you know, when you're talking 30 minutes of fuel, you know, any any miscalculation and you could be in a pretty bad situation
Now, the descent profile on this plane is also pretty weird, but it's not strictly necessary. You can get it down safely without having to perform special maneuvers, but it's uh, kind of fun to do it anyways. Especially because you can pick up a lot of extra speed and sometimes you can break Mach 10. So we're going to start our descent somewhere around 200 nautical miles out, which is pretty shortly here. All right, so let's brief on this descent profile. So we want to push down to about minus 15 degrees, minus 0.3 Gs, and then past 100,000 feet, hard pull up, but stay above the 80,000 foot deck. All right, it's 200 nautical miles out, time to start those maneuvers. Pushing forward to minus 0.3 Gs until we're about 15 degrees down. Below 100,000 feet, hard pull up. Stick all the way back, throttle all the way off, and stay above that 80,000 foot hard deck. So we're bleeding off speed is what we're doing right now. Effectively using the atmosphere as an air brake. while still remaining mostly in cruise without using any fuel. All right, so over here on the left, that's where our landing spot is. So if you can see it out the window, there's the island. The throttles are back all the way at idle. Now you notice the main jet engines have automatically kicked themselves back on. The gates are all opening up. And scramjet warning, we turn those off. And you can see our main jet engines, you can barely see it, there they are. We can actually give ourselves some power again. Keep the speed up while we descend, even though we're on conventional engines. We don't need our afterburners anymore. We're not accelerating, so yeah, we can start pushing the nose down. As we descend, we'll get into thicker atmosphere and slow us down automatically. Bring her all the way back to idle. Let's slow down below Mach 1 so we can start our, our approach. All right, and we are now subsonic. Give ourselves a bit of throttle, keep the speed up. Now we can shut off our fuel cell because we don't need it anymore. Still have a bunch of fuel, but a quarter tank there. Lots of tank, uh, lots of fuel in the wing tanks. A bit in the nose. All right, you can see there's the airport. There's two runways, sort of parallel to each other. Now, if you have an eye tracker, it's gonna really help. All right, bring the throttle back. Now, we don't wanna go anything below about 200 knots. Anything below about 180, and we end up, uh, end up going way too slow. Now, we are going too fast, though, now, so we can bring up our spoilers. So you can see, there's the runway. Fully VOR this or VFR this thing, but it's a little difficult in this plane. Coming in on final, let's get our landing gear down, line up with the ILS, and we want to slow down a bunch. We're doing way too fast. Sort of 200 knots is kind of our, our good approach speed. A little bit high, get down. Thank you. 
off. Crosswind. And spoilers can come out. I don't think there's reverse thrusters on this, but I haven't really tried. Some of them get activated in weird ways. There we go. That's how you fly the Dark Star. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you like other flight sim stuff, you might want to stop by my Twitch stream on Fridays and Saturday nights at twitch.tv slash in the blue yonder. And if you like real airplane stuff, especially amphibious airplanes and float planes, then uh, this is the right channel for you. I do a lot, a lot of stuff with my amphibious lake buccaneer. So until next time, fly safe.